Okay, welcome to the stream, everyone. Today is week week 14 of the mini paint challenge. And we've got a really fun collab today. We are actually teaming up with um, another artist. She's from Colorado in the US. And I'm really excited to show you the reference photo she provided with us today. So if you're new here, uh, here is how to join the challenge. So I have a reference photo up on my website. You can download the kind of like higher quality image there if you'd like to paint along with us today. And I will be keeping these lives up on my YouTube channel so you can watch them back anytime you want. Uh, and it just makes it easier for you guys. And then you can go back to it whenever you need to if you're watching live today. And so you want to, on either Instagram or Facebook, make sure you tag me at Megan Jossel Art and use the hashtag mini paint challenge. And then I'll be able to find your art and show it some love because I love seeing all of your guys' stuff. I actually had one more person like add theirs in already this morning because I post the reference photos the day before. So a few of you have already done the photo for today, which is awesome. So here, I will go to my collab screen right here. Uh, so this is the artist that we're teaming up with. Her name is Rachel. And you can follow her on all of the, I left all of her handles there. I think it's just Rachel Marie Art on all of them. I'm pretty sure I looked it all up. Um, and so that's Rachel. She provided this reference photo for us to do today. And I also uploaded this to my website too, so you can download her original reference photo. I did make my own little version of the reference photo, so I took it into Photoshop and changed it around a little bit. So I'll show you my version of it that we're gonna do. Um, but this is what she painted. Well, she didn't paint it, she used colored pencils, which is another thing that I was going to talk about today. So make sure that you use any art supplies that you want. You don't have to do oil paints. So I'm going to be using oil paints today. Hey, welcome. Welcome to the stream today from Turkey. Perfect. How do you say that name? I have never heard of that place before. That's so cool. Welcome to the stream today, guys. So we've got some people joining us already. And so here is the reference photo. So I edited her reference photo into kind of like my own little style because I'm going to be doing mine on a little six by six. And she did hers a little bit bigger, but like I love her spacey background that she chose for hers. So definitely like go check her out on her social media handles there that I've left. But this is the one we're going to be painting today. I figured we'd go for like the nice bouquet background, which is just so fun. I love bouquet backgrounds. So cool. And it's nice to see people from like all over the world joining. I love that. Okay, so we have some colors set up. I'm just going to go over the colors that I have on my palette right now and see if we want to add any more colors to the palette because I think we might want to add some like bright greens in there today, especially in the leafy area. I like using cadmium green for that. So I'll definitely add that to the palette, I think. So we've got um, titanium white here and then we've got uh, quinacridone magenta which I think we could use in some of the pinky colors in the reference photo here. I think it'll be good for some of these pinks. I'm just gonna move my arrow around, point at like the different areas. Yeah, so like these pinky colors would be good for the quinacridone magenta. And same with the alizarin crimson, we've got that. And I think right in the sunflower, we'll probably use a little bit of this cadmium red light and then cadmium yellow for like the brightest parts of the flower will be really nice as well. And we'll kind of like work into here a bit for like this brown color. I'm almost thinking we might wanna try using like some burnt sienna again. I feel like we can add that in and we'll add the cadmium green in as well because it's a nice bright green. And then we've got sap green, which I think will be good for some of the Little, it's a mix of, what is it, Indian yellow and, what is it, phalo blue? Yeah, phalo blue and Indian yellow 
are the main mixes in that one. So you could also just make sap green with those two pigments as well. Really nice green for like nature-y things. So it's perfect for today. And then, so we've also got, we've got the greens and then in the background, we've also got kind of this orangish color, which we can mix up with the cadmium uh, red and the yellow there. And I'm just looking. So we also have, I think I want to add a little bit of ultramarine blue back on my palette. I ran out of it last time. This is just paint from last week that I'm trying to use up. I store my palette in the freezer and it is in Europe next to Poland. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've never been to Europe before. So my uh, geography for there is, uh, I got to work on it. <laughs> I will have to look that up. I love learning about where every little place is and so Poland okay so that area of Europe that makes sense okay I will have to look that up thank you uh, I appreciate uh, the love on all of my art thank you and Okay, I'm gonna put the cadmium green here. I didn't really make room on my palette, but I try to keep it kind of rainbow so you guys can see the different colors that I'm using. So I'll just kind of keep that above there for now. Don't really have space. And then I'm gonna also use burnt sienna. So that was cadmium green and then burnt sienna. I think my husband's probably listening in right now and is gonna write all of those down for us and put all of them in the description. I think some of the base colors should be in the description already. The only one I'm adding new today is the cadmium green. And we've got... Okay, I guess we can start mixing some colors. I'm thinking I want to paint... I like doing like the bouquet backgrounds first. So I, I'm going to start mixing the colors for that first. And we'll lay them like on the edge here. So we will go with... I missed the cadmium green and burnt sienna. Okay, perfect. Thanks for adding that, hun. He's my little stream management over there. Okay, yeah, we'll mix some of the greens down in this section. And we'll even, because the background green kind of has similar greens to the stem area. So we'll work on getting that mixed now. So we're going to use cadmium green. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking the colors, just take the base color and hold it up to the reference photo and see if it's kind of like in line with what you want. I'm going to add a bit more light here. Just add a bit more light. Just so it's easier for us to see the colors. So the cadmium green is really good for some of the bright areas already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this and just make our little palette on the side there so bright in my face but it's like really dark out today <laughs> okay hopefully it's uh there we go that should be a lot brighter for you guys okay we're gonna add a bit of sap green to it which will kind of tone this green down a little bit i think this will be really nice color for the background as well and also the leaves there I would say for the background we're gonna want to probably add some white to that even I'm gonna make a bit more of this color and we're gonna use that Let me know if you guys have any questions too as I'm like working on it. Even if you're watching the replay of the tutorial, just leave them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Any questions you might have. I'm trying to make more uh, question answer videos too, like on my uh, YouTube shorts. So if you have any questions, just leave them and I will try to make some videos on them as well just so you can come back to them anytime you think of anything. Okay, let's see how that color looks. 
So I think that'll be a pretty nice color. I'm going to tone that down for the background. So I'm going to take half of that, put it here, and the other half, I'm going to add a bit of titanium white to it. A bit more sap green, I think. And this will give us, I think, a pretty nice color for the background. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, not perfect. We're going to add a little bit more sap green. I think I put a little too much white in it. A little bit more cadmium green and sap green. The thing if you add white to color sometimes it tones it down so much really quickly Went a little crazy with the white there okay let's see how that's looking yeah that's closer to what we're looking for in those areas where did you buy your dress I actually got it from the thrift store. I'm not actually sure where it's from because it doesn't have a tag on it, but I saw it at the thrift store and I was like, it is so cute. Like it's got all the, these little apples on it. I love dresses like this. Anything with like colors and like fruit and veggies and stuff on it, I will pick that dress up right away. Yeah, I'm a big thrift store shopper. Anything I can find secondhand is a score. Yeah, I really love dresses. I've been wearing, you know, I never used to wear dresses when I was like in like my teenage years and stuff. I was very much like a jeans and sweater person for a really long time. And then I became an adult and I was like, no, I love dresses. <laughs> really see oh thank you yeah I th I think I uh, I like the bright colors and I feel like it probably shows through in my art too I love I love bright colors and fun prints and stuff one of my favorite things okay I'm gonna add I'm gonna add this to the side in case we need a bit more of this color later on Gonna use the sap green to get kind of those darker tones in. Just mixing a bit of this green in with it to lighten it a little bit. Almost kind of like similar colors to like my dress that I'm wearing, the greens that we're, <laughs> we're doing right now. Green is one of my favorite colors, which you can probably tell because like the wall behind me is also green. I am a big fan of green. It just makes me happy, especially like the brighter greens. Maybe not so much the sap green. This is maybe a little too dark for my liking, but it's nice in the shadow areas. It's a perfect green for the shadow areas. So I'm going to I'm going to use a bit of that sap green as well. And I think that will be like a good start to like the green sections and we can always mix as we go a little bit more to combine those colors. I think we made some decent transition colors there and we can kind of go from there. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to set this one over here. I'm going to clean this area off so we don't mix the colors too much. Don't want our other colors getting super muddy so I'm just going to make sure that area is clean enough so we don't get green into our other colors. I'm thinking I want to go with the pink colors next. Now I said I was going to use, I'm going to mix up both of these. So I have quinacridone magenta and add a little bit of titanium white to it. I think it might be more on the purpley side than I want it, but let's, let's see. If not, we'll go with the and crimson. We'll see how we like it compared to the reference photo. It's okay to shift the colors in your painting a little bit if you like a certain color a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's gonna be like, it's gonna be pretty good though. Like, I think it'll work. 
should work for what we want. This tends to be on like the cooler side and I would say like a laser and crimson is more on like the warmer side. I keep meaning to go and buy quinacridone rose which is on the warmer side as well. This one definitely has some like bluish tints to it and that's why it kind of goes this purpley pink color. Yeah, I, I like that. I think that is a really nice base color. Now I'm going to want to push that, um, push a little bit to the side. I'm going to add a bit more quinacridone magenta to that. Make some of the darker areas. And then we'll also lighten it just so we have some transition colors for like the little pink circles, the bouquet circles in the back. I learned that word like a few years ago when I was like doing photography and stuff. I really like taking photos and learning about all of the different aspects of photography. But yeah, apparently that blurry background is called bouquet. B-O-K-E-H. <laughs> Okay, so that's a really nice dark color. So we've got like a nice transition. I'm just gonna put the darker one here. I'm gonna also leave a little bit on the palette there and I'm gonna add some more white to that. And this is gonna be super, this is kind of like the highlights on, on the bouquet circles. If I didn't add too much white, I think that should be okay. Yeah, that's kind of what we're going for in those areas. Okay, so I'm going to clean this off. I'm going to grab this color, so we'll put that as like the next transition color. And then for this one, I'm going to grab a decent amount of that one. I'm going to Put that down as the next transition color. And then we're also going to make a brighter white as well with just a little bit of the pink in it. So we're going to mix it on top of the pink we just scratched off and it'll kind of just tint it just a little bit. It's nice to make transition colors beforehand so we don't really have to mix a ton of colors as we're painting. It makes the painting process a lot faster if you do this beforehand. And this doesn't take more than 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, once you get used to it, it might, it's okay if it takes a little bit longer at the start when you're first getting used to mixing colors, but you'll get the hang of it. And then it'll make your painting process a lot faster. Especially if you're working on smaller pieces that you can get done in one sitting and you're using oil paint, at least you can save the oil paint in the freezer. It's like one of the reasons I love oil paint so much. I find when I'm using oil paints, it's just nice that you can put it in the freezer and then like bring it out the next day. Like these colors, I've had them on my palette since last week and they're, they're still going strong. Okay. I'm thinking that we will also mix up what else we got. So for the background, there's also kind of that like more muted, like orangey yellow in the background. So like all these like little dots back here, we're going to work on that color. And that color actually comes into the sunflower a bit in these kind of shadow areas near the center. So we'll try to mix it kind of similar. And then we can use that. So that I would say, let's start out with yellow. Go from there. Take that cadmium yellow light that we put there and just hold it up to that area. And you'll see that it's very saturated. And so we're gonna also wanna make it a little bit on the red side. So we're gonna put some cadmium red in it. And we're also going to have to desaturate the color. Now, when I say desaturate the color, all we're doing is we're pulling the color down in 
in kind of like this, there's a brightness to this color. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the opposite color on the color wheel. So we've got kind of like this orangey, red, yellow going on, a little mix of the orange and red. So we're going to go to like, you can hold up like a color wheel if you want and just look on the color wheel and you'll see right across from it is kind of more of those bluer tones. So we're going to take a bit of blue. So I'm going to use ultramarine blue. And I'm going to add this to here. And that is going to, I think we might even want to add some more yellow to this. So I think we maybe went on the orange side. We're going to test it out first. So we're going to take this color, mix it up, and you'll see that the color is definitely desaturated. It's got almost kind of like a greenish blue tint in there now because we added the blue. So this color is getting pretty close. I think I'll leave some of that to the side. I'll also make a more yellowy one. Let's see what we can do here. We'll make a few transition colors for that area. Okay. And I'm not trying to match it exactly, but I am trying to get the value very similar to it. So you'll notice, so the value is like the lights and the darks in there. So I'm matching this color specifically in this area where my arrow is. What is your cat's name? Oh. It's one of my cats up there. <laughs> one of my cats is up in the little tree basket right now. I have two cats. One of them is named Mona. She's got like this cute little, little black mustache. And then our other cat, she's like super fluffy, black and white. Uh, her name is Kit Kat. I love our cats. I was talking about maybe painting our cats again. I did like little portraits. Okay, I got to show you guys the little portraits I did of them. I have one of Mona, and then where is Kit Kats? Oh, I did Kit Kats too, here. Because they're both sleeping and I don't want to bug them, but I can show you the portraits. So I made little portraits of them. This one's Kit Kat, she's the fluffy one, and then Mona's got the little mustache here. Yeah, they are, they are a funny bunch. They're so cute. They are, I guess, almost 10 years old now. They are so adorable. I love them. Love them so much. Do you have cats too? <laughs> I know, they're really cute. Keep telling my husband that I want more cats. I love cats. We also have a doggo as well. His name is Toby. I painted him. I don't know where his portrait is right now. I think it might be somewhere else. I think I hung it up maybe in the front hall of the house near his little little corner in the front hall. I love doing little pet portraits. I really should do them more often. They're so fun to do the little pet portraits. They do take me a bit longer than like some of these other like still lifes though, because there's a lot of detail in the in the pet portraits I find. Okay, that color is pretty mixed up. I would say we still need to kind of like tone that color down a little bit. <sighs> it's a little bright for my liking. A little bit of that blue to it hopes that tones the color down. Yeah, we've got that greenish color. It's going to look like really off when you make the color. I find that's like the one thing you have to get used to, um, especially if you're painting on like a white surface. It's going to be really hard to see the 
the colors and how they'll turn out beside other colors while you're painting. But you kind of just have to trust the process that the colors you mixed are good. If they look good on the reference photo and you hold them up, they will probably look good on the canvas. <laughs> I do have a cat, fluffy white with green eyes. Oh, oh, like bow, like bow bun. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Oh, I like that. Fluffy and white. Oh, I've always wanted a fluffy white cat. I keep telling my husband I want like a cute little rag doll. But I have never found a rag doll at any of the adoption places. Ugh, they're just such cute cats. I feel like rag doll personalities are like my favorite too, because they're just like they're so chill and like cuddly, and they have like really cute meows. A lot of them. Some of my friends have rag doll cats, and they're so adorable. I love their temperament. I'm getting distracted. <laughs> uh, okay, we've also got kind of, so I'm thinking in some of these areas, we've got kind of like a yellowy green transition, like in the background, like there's more sunflowers or something in that area. I think this is like pretty good. I do think we need a slightly darker like orange color too. So we might want to like have just a slightly darker orange. I should have left like some room at the top there to try to make them flow a little bit better, but that's okay. We will grab the cadmium yellow again. Oh, I added a little green into that by accident. Start out with cadmium yellow. Okay, there we go. And then some cadmium orange. We're going to add some blue, and this will give us kind of that orangish color. I'm going to add more cadmium red to that as well. Let's see. Got, oh, that's perfect. That is exactly what we're looking for in that area. I realize I picked a really complicated uh, reference today, so I try to do these tutorials in the three hour time frame, so then they're not like running on too long. But uh, this one could be a little bit longer today. At least I don't have to pick up our kiddo until, uh, what is it? I have, an, I have an extra hour after the three hours of the stream, so I have an extra hour today if I need to go a little bit longer with the stream today because it takes me a while. We'll see how, how much we can get done. It's kind of fun to have like a time limit, you know? So then you don't focus too much on like all the like little details and kind of it's a little bit more like relaxing that way where you don't have to worry too much about all of the details. I tend to be pretty like detail oriented with my paintings so when I have time limits it's actually really good for me it's a bit relaxing to have that okay now we are going to work on more of the colors in the actual sunflower so I'm thinking we'll work on the yellows on the side because they're just really pretty and we'll get that nice bright yellow so we're gonna grab the cadmium yellow I'm going to see how this looks up against it. So the cadmium yellow, it's kind of more on the green side, I would say. It's not actually very cadmium yellow. There's a few sections that are pretty close, but this sunflower actually has a bit of a green tint to it. So I think if we add a little bit of this, uh, oh, I didn't even mention that I have cerulean blue hue on here, did I? I know my husband probably put it into the description for me though, because it's a color I use a lot. But that's cerulean blue hue. I'm making like this nice green color. I'm just gonna put this to the side because like that's obviously like way too bright. That would be nice for the leaf though. I like that. Said we were gonna use this for the leaf, but I mean this one is really nice. Okay, I'm going to leave that to the side, and we can take from that as we need it. 
So I'm going to take a bit of that off of there. And yeah, it's already there. That's what I figured. It's a color I use all the time. So there is my yellow. I'm going to add a little bit of that green back to it. We're just going to add it slowly, very carefully, trying not to add too much at once. And take it and make sure you compare it. And if it's not quite there, a little bit more. I'm probably going to need to actually grab some more cadmium yellow out anyway. I still haven't went to the art supply store, so I'm actually running low on my cadmium yellow. I keep squeezing more out. And... Okay. I need to grab my little tool to squeeze it out, but it's kind of blocked by my lighting right now. It's all in front of it. <laughs> okay. Let's see how that mixed up. Still kind of more on... I think that'll be good though. Like that's like close enough to it. So we've got kind of like a greenish yellow and that's going to be the main color on the flower. So we've got that. I'm going to put, I think the flower color is like here. I'm also going to just grab a little bit of the pure color and add that to our palette as well because it's nice to have like a very saturated color on the palette. Sometimes I just add the, the original color. We're also going to want to have um, a slightly a darker color to this. So we're going more into the oranges in those darker areas. So we're going to add like some transition colors there. So we've got this and we're going to slowly add a little bit of this guy here slowly as I add way too much. <laughs> Just going overboard on the pigments today. It's okay, we're gonna add a bit of this green in and this will desaturate the color. So that little greenish yellow we made, just desaturating it with a bit of that. Let's see if that's closer to what we want in some areas. So, that actually is pretty good in a lot of the areas. Kind of similar to like this color that we made. Now what we're going to do is we're going to want to get the value down quite a bit in that. So instead of going with the cadmium red, I'm actually going to go over to alizarin crimson now. And we're going to start adding this as like our base for the orange. We're going to add some yellow in there. Just to get those like really dark areas, it's really hard to turn this color dark and have those darker sections. So go more on the alizarin crimson. Such a nice deep color. I love using alizarin crimson and a little bit of the ultramarine blue as my black or like my darkest color in my paintings. Because I'm not a big fan of using black paint. I tried using it for, for one of them to kind of show like what happens. And it, especially when you like add titanium white to black, I feel like it's like not the nicest like shadow color. I feel like you can add more vibrancy to your paintings if, especially if you're going for like a very colorful feel. Like if you're going for more of like a dark kind of like washed out feel, which I know that I used to paint that way and I liked that kind of style, but now I want my paintings to be brighter. So it just kind of depends on like what you're looking for as like your final result in your painting. But I try not to use black now because I find it makes my images just a little bit more washed out and like gives it more of a darker feel to it. Okay, let's see. So that's like 
pretty red. We're going to want to add a little bit of ultramarine blue to that. That'll give us kind of that deeper color. We're going to still have it on like the more red side. We're making kind of the darkest tone if we can right now. It's definitely more on the red side, but I kind of like that for like, so I'm, I'll, I'll grab my arrow, I'm doing like these areas here around it, and even into the sunflower, like the middle of it, there is some like nice red tints like this in the middle. So I might actually keep that color. That's more of a like down here color because I want some transition colors in between that. So I'll make a few transition colors in between that before we go crazy. Okay, so we're gonna lighten this up. This color we just made with a little bit of the cadmium yellow in hopes to make some more transition colors into that like orangish stage. And that should be pretty good. Try not to get like this uh, light in my eyes. <laughs> Okay, and this one is pretty good. Let's see how that looks now. We'll get to the fun part, which is painting in a sack. I'm almost there. I'm gonna say I need a little bit more alizarin crimson in that. Kinda like that though, like that's a pretty good, like that's like a, closer to it's like the next color like it's very similar to this one and then we're gonna want a slightly darker color this one is more so there's kind of like two shadows there's more of the bluish shadow and then there's more of like the orangish shadow in there so right now i'm kind of making that like bluish shadow and that's going to be similar to like the red, just more on the blue side. And we're pretty much just going to add a lizard and crimson and the ultramarine blue. But we're going to add more of the blue. And we're going to add a little bit of that yellow in there, not too much. Just a little bit. Just mixing our primary colors to really get these different tones. That's like basic primary palette right there with the ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and yellow. I've also got a little bit of the CMYK palette. I like to have a bit of a mixed palette like to use a bit of both. So the CMYK is the cyan, magenta, and then yellow. Let's see how that is. So that's definitely like nice for some of those darker tones there. Just kind of more on the bluish red side. And then we also want a slightly toned down version of that. So I'm gonna add a bit of yellow to it. And hopefully that's what we're looking for. And that's kind of like the shadow color, but also like some of the middle colors too. I think it'll be really nice for a bit of both. And that's gonna be kind of this color here. Let's see. Yeah, so that, that's kind of the color we're looking for. I hope I mixed enough of that. I might have to just mix a little bit more of that. And that was just mixed up with a little bit more blue than red. That's a really good shadow color there. So we've got some of these shadow colors and then these are like the darkest shadows in the middle. And then this is like a dark shadow on the actual sunflower. 
And that's actually looking pretty close. I need a little bit more yellow in that. I also was trying to fool around with the camera settings. I got like a new app for my one camera that like faces the reference photo, which you'll see in the next scene that I made. I've been trying to mess with the colors a bit because I know we've had trouble with making the colors like look accurate on your end. Not that it's a huge deal, but I would like to, the colors to like look a little bit more accurate. So I changed some basic settings like the Calvins, um, the lighting, and I also changed like the saturation and the contrast. So I'm hoping that the colors look a little bit better today for the stream. It's kind of my plan. Okay, that looks pretty good. I like that. I think. That's like nice sunflower colors here. I feel like they match pretty good. You'd think that, you know, like the local color of a sunflower, you like, the local color is like, you look at a sunflower and you're like, it's a yellow sunflower. But then you go here and this is called relative color. So we're actually picking out the exact colors that like we see in the photos. So like obviously a sunflower is yellow but it has so many different like shadows and the light hits it differently. And so that's what we're doing here is we're breaking it down from a local color into all of the relative colors. Some fancy new terms potentially for you to use. Learned a bunch of those in art class. <laughs> And then, so this center area, there's kind of like little bits of like yellow and stuff in there, but I think we can probably just use some of these other yellows that we have picked out. Now I'm looking here, just seeing if we have all of the colors that we need. Honestly, I think we can probably get started. We've been mixing colors for like 40 minutes now. So we, I think are good to start painting and get to the fun stuff. Let's uh, move this to the next scene. I will transition it to the next scene. So we've got this here. I am going to move my camera so then you can see my face a little bit more as I'm painting. Move my camera a bit over. You'll see some of my kitchen there and the camera there. Move that around, and then you will also, okay, I moved the camera, whoopsies. I will adjust the webcam a bit, and I'm also trying to film like a time lapse, that's why I've got like this camera here. I feel like I need to do a tour of like my whole like stream setup. I've been getting a lot of questions from like other artists on how I run my stream. So I should really make a video for you guys so you can see how I run these streams. I actually used to help my husband. He used to run uh, a gaming stream. So he was streaming like tournament gameplay. And so I was the one that learned all of the streaming technology. So I use Streamlabs OBS for mine. And yeah, I, I did the setup of the stream and all of the different scenes and the cameras and stuff. He didn't have as many cameras for his, so this is maybe a little more complicated than his old stream, but that is what got me started was helping him stream and managing all of his devices and stuff and using like capture card and stuff for his streams. So I've been only doing this stream for you know 14 weeks now but I was helping my husband do his streams and stuff before and he did that for a few years that was a little passion project he had on the side he was playing a lot of like tournaments and stuff which is kind of fun I feel like it's that was like a fun point in our little era there doing the gaming streams I'm just setting up my um my phone this part as well gives you guys a little bit of time to uh, finish getting everything ready that you need to for the painting section 
So I'm just setting up because I like to also film like shorts content. So try to film all of the social media stuff all at once if I can, which is why the like it gets so complicated the setup because I have so many things I want to film for. Okay, let's see. Okay, there we go. And we've got that. And I am just going to fold this over. So you can see my setup here. I'm also going to grab out, I have this little jar of, it's just linseed oil, refined linseed oil. I use the, I'll show you the one that I use. I use this linseed oil here, the Gamblin's refined linseed oil. And I find it is great for cleaning off my brush, like in between colors. That is what we are using here. So I'll just put it off to the side so you can see when I dip into there. Um, the one color we might end up adding to the palette a bit too is just a bit more titanium white in some of the lighter areas. But honestly, there's not like a ton of like highlight colors. And if we do have a highlight, I might actually use this like pinkish one. I don't like to use just plain titanium white. It's nice to have a little bit of a mix of other colors in there. And just adjusting my camera. Okay, that should be set up okay there. And now we can start painting. So for the first brush, oh, I gotta, I gotta do my sketch first before I pick out a brush. So I'm gonna use a little bit of this kneaded eraser I have here and I'm going to use this to just dab off a bit of the the graphite that's on here because we don't want this getting mixed in with our oil paint especially since we have a lot of lighter colors today yellow is really bad for mixing with graphite I find it's like one of the worst colors when it comes to graphite because it will mix with it and make it super super muddy really quickly so all we're going to do is we're going to take a bit of this. I'm just warming it up in my hands so it takes the graphite out really nicely. And we're going to use this and we're just going to dab it off. So all we're doing is we're going to take this and you'll see it just coming off a little bit. You'll kind of see there it's coming off. We're just going to leave enough of the picture on that we can paint over it. Just guidelines. You'll notice in my sketch I don't add like a ton of details. You're welcome to add details to your sketch if that helps you. A lot of people like doing underpaintings for that reason, but when you do an underpainting, you kind of have to wait for the underpainting to dry before you can go over it. So I'm a big fan of Alaprema, which is like painting all in one go. So I don't do that because I don't have the patience to wait for my under layer to dry. I like to just paint. <laughs> Though if you are finding that colors are really hard to see, you can buy either like toned paper or you can add like an under layer to the paper. So you see some people using like bright colors and stuff like pinks and blues and greens underneath and that's just so then they're not painting on a white surface because things will look a lot better on potentially like a contrasting color in the background so like for this I would probably use I would I would probably use it's like a bluish background for this one, honestly. Like if I was going to do an underpainting, I feel like blue is a really nice contrasting color to all of the colors we have there. Nice, like bright blue or even like a deep blue in the background would be nice. 
maybe I should start giving background suggestions just in case you guys want to paint the background as well. And if you want it to like, if you want to paint the background and like make it dry quicker, you could use, so like I'm using oil paint, so why I say you'd have to wait for it to dry is because oil paints don't dry as fast, but if you were using something like an acrylic paint, you could probably paint like a base layer of it really quickly and then just like take a little bit of a blow dryer to it and like dry it pretty quickly. So acrylic paint is a popular under layer. I personally don't like painting oil paint over top of acrylics. I've tried it a few times and I find it's like harder to blend on top of it. It doesn't give like the desired effect that I want. I really love just painting straight onto the paper. It's like so absorbent and it like mixes the colors really nicely. Making sure I get my water in. Okay, now, fun part. Get to put our first brush strokes down. So I like starting out normally with either like my number four. So I'm gonna do the background. Let's have a number six brush. Debating on, I think I might start out with my number six brush and then work with some of my number four. These are Chasel Blender brushes by Princeton uh, from their Velvet Touch series line. And so I'll probably use these three brushes to start. I'm gonna start with the bigger one. I'm gonna start working in with the Let's work with the, the yellow colors in the background. The yellows and greens, I feel like they're quite prominent in the background. So I'm gonna start with the lightest yellow color that we made for the background. We're gonna start out with that. So we're gonna work our way around. I'm starting out with the background this time just because I tend to do it with, um, the bouquet backgrounds. It's nice to get kind of like the backgrounds nice and done and then do the flower in the front. And now as you see the color going down, you're gonna think, oh wow, that looks really bad because the color looks, like I said, along the white, it's gonna look very like dull. It's gonna be very weird to put a color like this down. And I'm going with this. You're just generally putting it where you see it. This is kind of like pretty faded in the background here, so. And then we'll grab the second color here. It's kind of like orangey toned down color. And then we'll leave space for the darker colors too. So I'm going to grab another brush. And I'm going to grab this slightly deeper color. I'm not mixing it too much in, kind of leaving space here. We're really just trying to make like a faded background so it looks like there's, you know, some sunflowers maybe in the background or some other plants that are nearby in the background. And so like that's kind of what we're trying to convey here. And then we can always come in with other colors later on, or if you don't like how the background turned out, you can always come in later after your painting is dry and you can add more here and there. I 
and we'll start as you're going around you'll start to see the sunflower take shape which is kind of nice i love when you get like the background in and then you can see where like all the petals are for the sunflower you can really start to see everything kind of take shape and you get all these like little details in so there's more green actually in this section so i'm just gonna kind of get this yellowy color going here This is such a fun background to make on Photoshop too. I really love on Photoshop how I can just use all of the tools and like create something a little bit different. Because the original reference photo had like a nice blurry background, but I think there's just something nice about adding all of the like little circle bouquet type colors adds a little bit more color into the background which is what I wanted and with the like purpley pink that I added in the background it's a really nice contrasting color I try to do that with like a lot of my paintings I try to add the contrasting colors because it really makes your painting pop if you kind of have like you know the yellows in the front and then like the contrasting pinks pinky purples in the back there and so that's kind of what I was going for when I was designing this, just so you know where my mind was at, I guess. So I'm going to do a mix of the sap green and this one. I kind of want it between these two colors. And so I'm laying this color down here. Because this part has a bit more green to it and we're just gonna kind of we can go back and like kind of blend it a bit more later on but right now we're just kind of laying down the colors i really want the background colors to be muted for this one I'm trying something a little bit different because normally i have like pretty bright backgrounds but it's nice to have a more muted color it almost reminds me of one of the paintings I did. I did like a butterfly a while ago with like a bouquet background. Kind of had some of these like more muted kind of colors in it. I also did, I think I still have it on my wall over there. One with this like little plant in the background. Like I'm holding like a little plant in the background like bouquet as well and it had some like really nice muted colors I realized I like gravitate towards these bouquet backgrounds or I like purposely put them in, in a lot of my work okay we're gonna add that yellowish green again slowly starting to take shape there gonna work our way around the whole thing adding the colors that we need to and that's why I'm using multiple brushes so I don't have to clean them between colors really so I've got one brush for green and yellow and then as we get into the pinks I will have the third brush for that good we'll add looks like we've got some more green tones there so we're gonna grab some of this green again we have to be careful with the pink too because the pink is gonna blend really weird if we're not careful pink is like I said, the contrasting color to it. So we have to really be careful in these pink areas that we don't blend this. We don't want to blend the pink with the green and the yellow because they will look muddy if they do. 
with the green and the yellow there and like even the orangish colors that we have up there they are very similar on the color wheel they're nice transition colors but we get the pink in there and it will start looking muddy if we do so I'm going to go into some of these greens now so I'm going into this lighter green that we made as well and gotta go into the darker green here too I said we'll go back in and like blend some of these afterwards as well. Okay. And that's going to be a pink one as well, so we're kind of just trying to keep those colors away from it if we can. Also doing the background first will help with getting kind of those base colors in beforehand. And once we get those base colors in, it'll be a bit easier to see what colors we need for the main flower. It'll be easier because we won't be working on a white background anymore. And that's why I always kind of go in with these base colors first and then I'll go back in and like add details or like I'll blend things out as needed. Okay, we're just adding some lighter greens to this section here and this very light green in here. Perfect. Now we're going to work on and then I work into the section. I try not to get color on that leaf there. I'm just working on the stem area. Get those here. There we go. Almost a slightly brighter color in that area, but we might come back in and like add a little bit of this yellow. Got that brighter yellow there. That's just straight cadmium yellow. We come in and add a bit of that cadmium yellow there. That's nice. I think the yeah, I think they actually are a lot better now. It's like it's matching up more, right? like blending in pretty good I think which I'm quite happy with coming in and adding a little bit more green in here I realize we kind of forgot a bit of green up here on the top just adding that in and then as we get into this area we're actually getting into kind of like a lighter color this is where we're gonna add a bit of green down here but this is like lighter green this lighter green that we made we're gonna actually grab some titanium white we're gonna mix it with the green that's already on our brush we're gonna add that in there 
there is just a very small section of that down there so I didn't want to mix like a whole color for that I'm also gonna leave this color here because we've got some like pinks kind of blending in here now and like yellows so I will use a clean brush and we'll come back to that after but this is pretty good so far there we go and I agree with you hun I feel like the colors are better so I'm glad it looks good from your end too Hoping it looks good on, like everyone's screen is different, right? So like I had properly like color graded my screen here, so it's hard to tell like what it will look like on other people's screens. But I kind of like warmed up the colors and at least it's a little bit closer now, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to grab some white as well, and we're going to make a very light yellowish color. That's just whatever's on our brush, yellow-wise, and kind of like the green. We're just toning that color down, and they're going to transition into the pink in this area, so... Trying not to blend it too much right now. That's going to be pink, and that's going to be pink. And we've got some more oranges in that area. So I'm going to grab this orange color we need. And as we get up into here, we've got some more oranges showing again. So we're just bringing some of those deeper colors into this area. What I was going to do was add, in this area I was going to add another kind of pinkish one there, decided I was going to add some pink. I'm going to add this dark kind of orange color in here between And I'm excited to put the pink in because the pink should be really fun and make it nice and colorful. Okay. And then we've also got a little bit of those deeper colors. Those are kind of more the pinkish colors in there. I'm going to grab this darker color we made. And we'll add the pinks in and then we'll go back in and just kind of blend out. I kind of was blending a little bit as I went, but just a little bit more blending that we had to do. So I'm going to grab this clean brush that I have and I'm going to start on the pinkish colors now. So we'll start over here and then work our way around. We're going to start with the darkest. Maybe we'll put all the dark colors down first. 
And then we'll go back in and add the lighter ones. So I have some deeper colors there. Edge there. Just laying it in very loosely. There's some deeper colors in this section here. And then definitely in this area here. Here, we're just kind of making this one up over here, so let's say that's dark there. to the next color down. So we're going to go to the next color, put this in. What we're doing is just adding transition colors between each of these. Now we're going to add the next color down, which is this. And why I added so much dark color is because this is going to make it quite light. It's going to come over here a bit more. Be very careful around the other colors with this pink color as we're doing the edges. I don't want these colors to blend too much. You can come back in with like a liner brush and really touch it up a bit afterwards, but for now. color here. And we will also get some in here. Kind of liking how fun this background is so far. need to buy like some sort of like neon pink or something too to use. I feel like it'd be fun to like add some more like super saturated like neon colors. I 
also feel like maybe afterwards I might add like some gold paint to it. I feel like having like gold kind of within the sunflower would look really pretty too. Trying to see where this is. You know, I don't paint flowers enough. I love painting flowers. I feel like I need to paint more flowers. I put a poll out the other day and asked you guys what you wanted to see more of and actually flowers and landscapes were at the top of the suggestions. So it's I guess good that I'm painting a flower today. I'll maybe try to add some more flowers into the mini paint challenge in the future too if you guys like flowers a lot. And I feel like in the summertime it might be fun to do like a landscape some pictures. I live on the west coast of Canada and there is really beautiful like ocean and mountain views here. So I feel like we could paint some of those and that would be really nice. Probably could look back in some of my pictures too and we can find an old one to paint as well. Just cleaning my brush off a little bit. Just taking some of the pigment off just by brushing it on my cloth here. And I'm going to grab some of this lighter color as well. Just going around the edges a bit. Those are looking a little sharper, that's nice. We're gonna go in with the blender brush and like blend a little bit of the background out too. So I've got these like really little brushes that I don't use for anything other than blending now. I'm just blending some of this out. Not too much, I don't wanna blend it up too much in these areas. kind of defining like circles a little bit that I made kind of some of these darker areas and be really careful around the pink areas that we don't blend them too much we really don't want to blend them too much I'm just I'm dabbing off my brush. I have another cloth there. But I'm just dabbing it off a bit. And it's just a dry brush. So this is like a dry brush technique. Touching up the pink edge there a little bit. I really don't want to mix it too much. This is the point if you want to adjust colors, you can like go into a bit of green here with the brush and like add a bit here and there as you need it. If you want to make certain areas darker or certain areas a little bit lighter, it's a great time to just kind of add a bit extra on top. That's why we did the bottom layer pretty thin. I try not to lay on too much paint for that bottom layer because it's easier to kind of add a little extra here and there. Kind of missed a bit of green paint in this section here. Or the leaf, it'll define that leaf area a bit more. Okay. 
I'm just gonna blend this area out a bit more. trying to keep this layer pretty thin just because we want it to be the blurry background and if you had too much thick paint then it's gonna look too detailed and look like it's in the foreground so we're trying to keep it blurry if we can don't want to add too much detail By blending it out like that, it's pretty good. Now what we're gonna do to the circles, because they are kind of more in the foreground, we are gonna add some detail to them. I like using, so I have a number 20 over zero liner brush. I'm gonna take some of this white color. We take a bit of our linseed oil that we have, just so it's easier to spread this white. And it makes it a bit more liquidy and easier to spread. We're going to take this and we're going to use this to define the little circles that we made. I'm going to kind of just slowly push it into the other color that we made very gently. Not adding too much of the pigment, that's why we put a decent amount of oil on it. And that'll just kind of define those circles a little bit more. Trying to focus really hard right now, so I don't like go. For some of the yellow parts, I'm actually going to take this bright yellow that we've got over here, put a little linseed oil on the side. I'm going to define some of the yellow ones now too, just a little bit on these areas here. You're kind of like blending it in a little bit as you do the yellow ones because you really don't want the yellow ones to be defined too much. 
the pink ones are kind of like our focus. my other blending brush to blend those out a little bit. Blend out the yellows a bit more. grab this dry brush again. I'm just going to clean it off a bit by tapping the old pigment off. I'm just running it over this yellowish color that we just blended out there. Just so it's not too bright. Okay. Okay, I think uh, that's looking more like we want it. Um, we could kind of come back to that if we end up wanting to, but I think that looks pretty good for now. And we're going to start working on, I'm going to work on the stem and then we'll work on the flower, I guess, next. So I'm going to clean off this green brush we were using a little bit. Don't have to do it too much, that's why I picked the green one. Because the colors or the pigments are pretty similar in the stem. And we're going to start out with this darker tone, the sap green. I'm going to define the darkest areas in the stem first. And then we will move on to the other areas. Of course, there was like a little hair on there. I got my little blender thing. Blend that out a bit. So a darker area there, and then there's also some darker areas in the stem part here. We will have to use probably the fine liner brush to really get that area. Okay, I'm going to go into the next color now, just cleaning off some of the darker pigment. I think we're going to go into this color here, second down from the top. You're going to notice the darker color fades a little bit as we add this green kind of on top of it. Oil paints are nice that way because we're able to blend into it. So you normally want to start out with those darker colors first. And it's easy to lighten them up. It's like the opposite of like watercolor paints where you want to start with your lightest colors first and then slowly deepen the colors. Okay. And for this, I'm going to start using so I'm going to get like a slightly lighter color first before I go in and use the liner brush. So I've got this nice bright color here.
kind of adding that background color back into there. Now I'm going to use the liner brush for, just notice the stream is called Donut Painting Tutorial. What? Oh, did I forget uh, to change it? Thanks, son. You can call it, I think I called this painting Sunflower Magic. So you can name it like Sunflower Magic. Definitely, because I, when you're making a stream, you can use like the old settings. And sometimes I forget to change it, but I find it's nice to use the old settings because then some of the like colors are saved in the description and I just have to change a few things in the title. I definitely changed it to week 14, but you're right, I didn't change it to sunflower. <laughs> uh, whoopsies. I was changing it too late last night, I think. I was getting tired by the end of setup last night, and I was like, no, I need to get some sleep. I'll fall asleep on stream the next day. <laughs> so, okay, now we're going to add some detail to the stem. So then I got this yellow this yellowy green color that we mixed up. Start adding more details to the stem. Yeah, just using the previous stream settings helpful when you're streaming a lot of the same content. Yeah, exactly. It uh, makes it a little bit easier. Like, I have a stream checklist, but apparently I need to add change the title. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it says change the title. I just skipped over it. Because I was like, oh yeah, I changed it to like week 14, and then I just kind of skipped over it at that point. So, what happens? There's so many steps I realize before like I get like the streams going every time. And so, like, I made, like, a little checklist for myself, but, you know, you're always just, like, bound to miss something, even when you have a checklist, because sometimes you just, like, gloss over things, because it's, like, routine at that point. Like, I've been doing these streams for 14 weeks now, so it's uh, easy enough to just kind of, like, miss something, right? So right now what I'm doing is I'm just adding like little bits of yellow in these areas just to define those sections a bit more. I'm trying to keep the shadows there. I'm gonna get into this white down here a bit with my brush. to get that. Okay, now I'm going to add some of those darker areas back in with this brush. Add check title. Yeah, I do have check title on the stream checklist, but I think after I put like week 14 down, I just I'll be like change like title, but then also change the number so I don't forget for next time. I got this darker sap green again, and I'm just going to define these areas a bit more again. I'm kind of just like pushing and pulling colors until like it makes sense, until things like look more defined. Also trying to not add too many details to it. When you're doing or you're working on paintings this tiny, you really don't need like a ton of details. The leaf isn't like our main focus either, so don't worry too much about all those like really, really tiny details. Just getting those base kind of like layers on. I'm going to 
add a little bit of this kind of like brownish color, brownish like purpley color that I made. And this will give us kind of those darkest areas there. I think I want to add a little bit more of the yellowish tones in there. That yellowish green that we made. I think I need a little bit more of that. That's kind of like the highlights. Make sure we add that back in. in so like the little highlight areas. I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there. go. I think the stem's looking pretty good. Okay. I feel like I could still like make this this color like a little bit brighter because it's a little bit brighter in the reference photo but honestly the colors are pretty accurate to what I'm doing I would say. So I'm not matching the colors exactly, but it's definitely a little bit lighter. Just trying to improve it every stream. So I'll probably mess around with the colors more later on the camera, just to see if we can get it a little bit more accurate. I feel like every reference photo might be a little bit different too. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the sunflower. I'm going to start by adding, I guess, the petals in first. Maybe we should start at the middle and then work our way out to the petals. I haven't decided yet. It's like the darkest part. In the middle, I want to add kind of like that deep base layer. I'm going to grab my number six brush. I'm just going to clean it off. I try to clean that pigment off so we don't get just keep dipping it in the linseed oil. Make sure if you are using linseed oil that you store your rags properly. It's really important when you're using oil paints especially to store your rag so they're hanging up and not like stacked up in a pile because they can actually catch on fire. Especially when you're like cleaning your brush with oil, it just adds extra oil to the rag, right? But the rags will slowly harden over time and then once they have hardened over a few months, then you can throw your rags out at that point. But don't throw them straight in the trash after you're done with them. It's better to like wait a little bit 
before you throw them out so then they can dry and they have time for that. Okay, so we're going to start on the middle section. I'm going to work from the darkest color to the lightest color. We're going to add a background color right now. So we're going to use this a combination between these two colors. So I'm going to start out with this darker one first, just like a darker purpley color. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of like dab that on a little bit. Don't worry too much. Make it fun and spontaneous. And then we're going to add detail to it afterwards. Now we're going to go into this more reddish color. So that was just kind of like our base color. Now we're going into the reddish color. Just adding a bit of color into that middle section. And go back into that darker color again. Dab that on as well. And closer to the end, we'll add some of those details in there. Okay, now we don't want to mix these colors too much. Got a nice mix of both of them though in there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take, I think we might take this brush. So this is a three over zero. Maybe I should grab, yeah, I think a three over zero will be good. This is a three over zero round brush. And I'm going to actually define these with this slightly lighter color. I'm going to actually mix a little bit of the red in there. Nice transition between the red and that lighter color here. We're going to start with this and define these like very little points that we've got going on. Just going to add little bits of this lighter color. A bit more of this light color here. like going around the edges and just adding that slightly lighter color and then add a little bit of the light color to the middle as well slowly start to take shape on that middle section there. I'm going to clean off this round brush. I'm going to go even lighter for some of them. We'll work on this next color here. It's like orangish color. We're going to use this in the sunflower. Work on the actual sunflower, but it's also in the middle too. I'm just going to add little details here and there, almost like kind of little lines with this. A bit more of that. Kind of reminds me of when I was painting like the middle of a cone flower. There's like so many different like colors and textures in the middle of a cone flower. 
kind of like this too, where there's just so many different textures and you want to build up the color a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to get, it's kind of like a muted, muted kind of like greenish yellow. So we're going to take a bit of green over this yellow and bring it down to this white area. And this is going to be kind of the highlight that we're going to use in the center. We're going to be very sparing with this because it is very bright. Now we're going to add all the like little detail areas. dipping back into it as you need it. And then Try not to make them too uniform as we're putting them around. So the middle is looking pretty good. Okay. I'm actually going to add some green tones to the middle. I don't know if you can see, like, right in the center, there's a bit of almost like a sap green kind of tone. And when sunflowers are growing, there is a little bit of green because the middle is green until they kind of, like, dries out a bit. That makes sense, so there's a bit of green. Just kind of adding that green in there. Um, gonna add some of that lighter yellow color again. Okay, and now we've got like that greenish tone in there. That's nice. And now we're going to work on the shadows just around the edges here. So I'll probably still use this brush. Just because it's nice and small. Might even want to use a slightly bigger brush. Let's see how this goes. I can always grab a slightly bigger brush if we feel like we need it. So those shadows kind of closer to the middle are like this darker one. Got kind of like darker shadows into the middle section here. I think I might want I might want a slightly bigger one. I feel like this number six is gonna be way too big, but let's see. I think we'll be able to get the paint on a little bit faster if we use that brush. And then we can come back in and we can touch it up with a little bit more. 
detail, but just getting those colors in initially. Kind of just go for what we're going for. I'm not going to add all of the detail in the sunflower. If I was doing a bigger piece, I would definitely add a lot more detail, but we're working on the smaller piece, so. Deborah, how are you doing? Nice to see you again on the stream. We are slowly working on this sunflower. It is slowly coming together now, so that's nice. We get to work on the actual flower part now. How is your day going? Go. Got Just trying to add all of the little shadows into this area. So I like the most like indented parts on the sunflowers. So we've got there we go. Good so far? Oh, that's good. I feel like it's pretty good over here. We actually got snow the other day. Uh, very strange. It's supposed to be almost spring here on Vancouver Island. We got a little, like, very little snowfall, but I think all of our little summer flowers, like crocuses and all of our cherry blossom trees are like, what is happening? Had an eye appointment yesterday over here. It's kind of a chill start to the week. I need to get some new glasses. I really like these glasses though that I got last time. So like I haven't decided if I like want to just keep these glasses and replace the lenses or find something similar. Hey, they're looking promising. <laughs> ah, thank you. Yeah, we are slowly getting the details in. We're on the uh, flower now. Almost summer here. Yeah, it's, it's getting there for us too. Slowly becoming summer, which is nice. Well, I guess we gotta get into spring. It was like nice spring weather. Like just last week, I was out in the garden getting things cleaned up. It's nice to see the, the summer weather coming now. Other than this weird bit of snow, maybe it's like the last snow of the season. We normally don't get much snow here on Vancouver Island, so. Last couple of years, though, it's been more snowy than it ever has been. When I first moved here over 10 years ago now, we definitely did not have this much snow. It's in the 80s. What would that be? In, that's Fahrenheit. What is that in Celsius? We do Celsius in Canada. <laughs> That's warm, right? <laughs> if my husband's there, he can do the calculation for me. Okay. 
I'm going to start on the next color. I'm going to actually clean off uh, one of these brushes. I'm using this green one here. I will clean it off. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, here in Victoria, it doesn't get very hot actually normally in the summer unless we have like those weird heat waves that have happened. Um, normally the summers are pretty mild here. In Celsius, uh, our summers are like maybe like 20, 25 at most. When those heat waves came, oh man, that was crazy. That one year we had those heat waves. It was like the heat dome or something they called it. Yeah, uh, warm around 26. Okay. That's like the hottest it normally gets in Victoria. But when we had the heat dome, like I was saying, it's like, I think it got close. It was like 49 degrees Celsius. Like that was disgusting. That was way too warm for my liking. Like our AC, we just have like a little portable AC because it doesn't normally get like super hot here. And it, it was struggling, it was like chugging along and it hardly kept the room like hardly below 30. That was, that was brutal when we had that heat dome. 26, that's pretty good, yeah. I feel like 26 is a pretty nice temperature, nice like beach weather, love that. You probably won't see those temperatures until like July-ish here. Our summer kind of runs from like, what was it? I'd say like June, July, August is like our hottest months here. Okay, we're gonna get kind of this orangey kind of color here that we mixed. That's gonna be our nice transition color in between this darker color we made. Oh, and then I have some friends like in Australia and they I think their summer is almost ending down there, right? The other hemisphere. <laughs> They're probably gonna go into winter as we're going into spring and summer. So I didn't mix like that super like kind of bluish green like I kind of have this one a bit for that top area so I'm gonna start adding that in now it's gonna seem very dark I think at first you just gotta trust the process that it'll look okay is like the shadowy section. So I'm using this like slightly greenish color. Gets to 40-ish almost all summer. Oh my gosh. So you, you get what <laughs> the heat dome felt like uh, for us. Not very good with like really hot temperatures. Definitely good being in Canada with the very mild slash colder temperatures. I feel like I'm not very productive in the summer because like it gets so hot. Especially when we had those heat domes, like I did nothing. <laughs> but when it's colder, I feel like I get more work done. <laughs> very hot. My husband, he actually, so 
he's Filipino, so his family is from the Philippines, um, but they actually lived um, overseas in Saudi Arabia for a few years there, uh, I think until he was about 10, and it was really hot there, he said. <laughs> it got probably that hot there, which is crazy to me growing up in Canada. We almost never have snow. Okay, so opposite. Okay. I mean, I guess on Vancouver Island, we don't get a lot of snow, but where I grew up, so I grew up in Ontario, which is on more of like the, it's like southwestern Ontario, I guess. That was where I grew up. We had a lot of snow there. It was mostly snow for a lot of the year. June, July, August was still our summertime, but we had snow the rest of the year. So very different to where I live now. I like the more moderate climates like this. It doesn't get too hot, it doesn't get too cold. It's like because we're like, Vancouver Island is like really close to Vancouver and Seattle area. So just kind of like rainy. <laughs> That's the best way to describe it. We have winter for two weeks in February, it doesn't last long. It's in the 80s and oh my gosh. Wow, that is really warm. I mean, that's probably nice though. I feel like at some point I'd like to live in like different places just to like experience different weather and climate and stuff and see how I like it. One of the reasons my husband left the military is we wanted to be more mobile at some point to be able to like travel and stuff and so he's not always just like working he used to be in the military so it's nice that now that he works from home we get to first of all just spend more time together and then yeah, we'll be able to, you know, travel and stuff more because he can, like, bring his work with him. It's nice to have, like, the remote companies and stuff. The tech field is really good for that. Lots of remote jobs now. But I haven't done much traveling in my life, so I never really traveled growing up. The one place I've traveled to is in the U.S. I went to Dominican Republic once. And I've been kind of all over Ontario. That was with my cousin. We used to do magic shows together. He still does magic. He's an illusionist. And we used to do shows together in kind of like northern Ontario. And then, yeah, I just haven't really traveled much. And I'd like to do more of it as I get older. So that's my goal is to get a bit more traveling and stuff done. And I figured if I make art my job, then... Uh, I can also travel with my art too. I think it would be fun to travel with my art and try painting in like different locations, do like plein air painting all over. Like how cool would that be? I just think that would be so fun to like paint in different parts of the world. And like visit all of the like artist friends I've made online over the years. 
really cool to like visit them and be able to like paint with them in person instead of just like on here. Those, those shadows are slowly coming along. And then we'll be able to add the nice bright yellows in after we get these shadows. Just really making sure we get these darker colors in first so we don't uh, mess things up too much. Go into there. So this one is coming over here. Just trying to see where the layouts are. Like that's the hardest part, I think, is like adding in all these shadows and then making sure that they Kind of fall over each other really nicely. Like it's one of the things with flowers, especially ones with like lots of petals and stuff. Some flowers are so pretty. Okay, I think we got kind of the darker sections there, and then we've got these lighter sections as we go around. Let's start adding in Just adding some of this darker section back in. I might even want to make a slightly darker color for this area too and add some more darks back into there because I feel like some of that area is a little light. So now we need to clean off one of our brushes so we can start adding those yellows in. We want to make sure oh. oh clearly excuse me with my yawns over here. I don't know which brush I should use. Maybe this pink one. I'll clean off the brush a bit. I think I need to find a clean surface again. <laughs> My towel is getting dirty. Okay, we'll clean this off and then gotta really clean this off because we don't want any pink to get in with the yellow. I think I need to get a few more of these like number four brushes so I don't have to like clean a ton between pigments. Just find it's like a waste of oil to have to clean it in between. And I don't like using like solvents, which I know cleans a little better, but Solvents just really aren't good for your health, so I'm 
try to avoid them. I'm also like really sensitive to like everything. Like I, I am so sensitive that I have to bring my own shampoo and like products to like the hair salon. Like I got my hair done the other day. <laughs> oh, bless my hairdresser. She, she works with my difficult skin. <laughs> She is really great for that. She said it's actually pretty common for people to come in with like their own products, so she has that happen quite a bit. I feel like a lot more people have like sensitive skin. Not uncommon. Okay, so now the brush should be cleaned off enough. We can start adding the yellows in. Now I'm going to start with this greenish yellow that we made and if we want to add a bit more saturation to it we can add a bit of this flame cadmium yellow. I like the green yellow that we have. Got of course some cat hairs in there. Okay let's uh, let's uh, get Some yellows in there. Okay, so we're gonna try to define some of these areas and we'll go back in and like I said add some more bright yellow afterwards. This color is gonna mix in really easily so I'm just gonna kind of try to lay it on without mixing too much. Just to get those base layers on. I feel like I need to grow some sunflowers this year in the garden too. I grew sunflowers the one year and they were so tall. My little sister gave me some seeds from her one sunflower plant. They must have been like giant sunflowers because they were like they had to have been like eight feet tall. They were, like, they were massive. Probably even more. They were going up to like our second floor. So I guess more than eight feet probably. <laughs> they were like closer to ten feet. Doing kind of the darker areas first. So I'm adding just little bits of the yellow within, just to kind of add some yellow in there. I'm dabbing off my brush too, in between. I wanted this to really be close to the color of the sunflowers. I'm trying not to go with like super bright colors this time. Like I said, kind of when we were mixing colors, I'm going for more of the like relative colors. As close to the colors in the reference photo as we can get them. Just so we get kind of or that realistic feel about the sunflower. I am going to go in with like a brighter yellow afterwards just to define the edges, but for now, Definitely looking a little bit more orange on the screen. I can see that. It does not look like that in person. 
I will make sure I take a picture of this afterwards for you guys. So you can see what it actually looks like in person. I mean, I kind of like the orange that's looking like on there anyway. Very pretty. I almost went a little too low, maybe in the Calvins when I was adjusting the settings, and I made them a little too yellowy. I will readjust those to make them a little less yellow. It's like at like 4,000 and something Kelvins right now. Okay. Starting to see it take shape now, which is really nice. Good. Almost done painting all of the petals this color.
We mixed up just the right amount of color. Perfect. We're running low on it. Okay. Now we've got to add a bit more shadows into a few of the areas. I grab this brush again. Shadow here. Before we add the really bright colors, I wanted to add a few more little shadows in. This shadow color. And we have so much time to add tons of like detailed shadows and stuff. Next time when I'm doing one of these ones, I'm not going to like spend so much time on the background. I feel like uh, maybe when we do another flower painting tutorial, I should focus on more of like the flower because I forgot uh, that I need more time for the flower section. ever do larger paintings so I do like six by six paintings I have done like some 12 by 12 paintings too I used to do even bigger ones I've done a few like bigger like commission ones for like family um, I realize I don't like doing bigger ones as much. I definitely gravitate towards the smaller pieces. It's kind of why I, most of my channel is now these like mini paintings. I, I don't mind doing bigger pieces, but I definitely enjoy the smaller ones more. But yeah, I have done some bigger pieces before. Um, the other size that I do is is the six by six and you can kind of see some of the lines from it so it's like doing like four of these kind of size they take me a lot longer though especially if I want to like add details and stuff like um, I have some six by six here here's like this one here I'll, I'll grab a flower one that I did I did this one so this is like a flower one that I did. The colors are maybe a little off, but yeah, like they're quite a bit bigger, these six by six ones. And I did this one like at Christmas time. It's a pine cone. So pretty nice size. I like the six by sixes. I mean, they're not like, I guess, big per se, but they're, uh, I feel like they're a nice size. I, I do really enjoy doing the six by sixes, but there's just something about mini paintings that are like so fun to do. <laughs> yeah, I think this one's for um, my mother-in-law. It was a commission I did for her. So I took a picture of like gallardias in our garden. I really love this one. And uh, so I painted that for her. I kind of like that our, our garden definitely does not have mountains like that, but I put it our, our garden flowers into Photoshop and I kind of like added like a little mountain sunset scape in the back because I thought it would look pretty and I did that 
yeah, I really like, I love the like flowery landscape kind of pieces. So yeah, and I really, I really love this pine cone one. I think it's like one of my faves that I did at Christmas time, like, the, like the bouquet backgrounds. Like I love doing like the bouquet backgrounds and stuff. So color pencils. Okay. Um, actually the person who's collabing with me today, she does colored pencils normally. And so hers, I showed at the start of the stream. Here's, here's, um, let me find hers. This is, where is her reference? So that is her name. Uh, that's her handle there if you want to check her out. She does colored pencils. She does a really amazing job. So like that is the one that she did of this reference photo. This is all done with colored pencils. It's been documenting it. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, I haven't worked a ton with colored pencils. I used to like doing colored pencils though worked a little bit. I haven't done any like tutorials on my channel, but she has a YouTube channel as well. And so you should definitely check her out. She has some great content on there. Um, and she started up her YouTube, I think last year maybe. And so she's slowly starting to add like more of her like colored pencil stuff, but she does some really, really pretty illustrations on hers. So I was like so excited when she wanted to do the challenge with me she's an artist from colorado and uh yeah she her work is just so like whimsical and like dreamy and magical and that one has like a really pretty like spacey background that she did with it i just love how she did that it makes me like want to try like using colored pencils again too such a fun medium I feel like every time I use colored pencils, it's like it's so sore on my wrist. I need to like stretch my wrists and even with painting though, honestly, like I get a sore wrist sometimes, especially when you're doing like tons of details. I bought like one of those little like electric hand massagers. So at night I like put it in the electric hand massager just to like, you know, keep my hand healthy so I can keep painting. But yeah, colored pencils, you really have to really have to color it quite a bit to get it there. But maybe I just need better colored pencils. I'm sure that there's definitely some like better quality ones. Just like when I started using oil paints, I was like, no, this time I'm gonna actually invest in like the really good supplies so then you know I can actually work with a nicer product. And I'm glad that I purchased so I, I purchased a lot of like gamblins like professional oil paints and it's so nice to have like good supplies I feel like it makes a huge difference yes it's like a form of meditation you're kind of like uh, I feel like all art is kind of like that too I, I used to do a lot of like pen Mandela type art and so like well, it wasn't quite Mandela's, so, like, it wasn't even on each side, but, like, I did a lot of, like, the pen art that you would see, like, in Mandela's, kind of almost, like, tattoo-type designs. And it's so relaxing to just, like, sit there and then, like, color it in with, like, markers and stuff afterwards. That's normally what I bring anytime I, like, travel, I'll just, like, bring some, like, markers and pens and do, like, that type of art. Okay, I've got this brush clean up. I'm grabbing this like really bright yellow now with my brush. I'm gonna add some bright yellow. Prismacolor or Ferber Castell types are good. Need to get some. Okay, yeah. I have a few of the Faber Castell um, like pit pens and stuff. They're really nice. I love using their products. And I think even some of my pencils potentially from there. I know definitely some of my markers are from there. They, they have some good supplies. And then I haven't tried the Prismacolor yet, but I will, I've heard those for sure. I will look into those. Okay, now we're defining these areas with like the really bright color. See, and I think like, if I get like really 
good colored pencils they'll probably be like more pigmented and like saturated and it might be like easier to blend them too so I'll probably like hurt my wrist less <laughs> definitely worth investing in the good art supplies because then you just enjoy the process a lot more when you really invest in the good stuff your painting has worked out really nicely thank you yeah I think it uh I actually really like how it's turning out. Just gotta add like the highlights now and like really add those like brighter colors into it. And I think I uh, actually did a pretty good job with it. Such a nice like reference photo to play off of too. And I kind of like. I love when I get like people collabing with me and they give me like a reference photo and then I get to like play with it and like Photoshop and like turn it into like my own style. There's like so much like, you know, like all of the like little prep stages of getting like your reference photo ready. Like I love that part. Just bought two books that are really good. Oh, okay. Uh, like art, um, like reading books or like sketch pad type books. I bought a new um, sketchbook the other day. Always going through all of the sketchbooks with all my ideas. And the portrait book by this. Oh, okay, so it's a portrait book. Yeah, I, I'm always, like, at the library, like, looking on their website and just uh, borrowing all of the, like, art books and stuff. You'll have to leave the names of them down there if you like them in the comment section so that I can come back to them, maybe try out the books. I want to do more portrait art. I do, like, a self-portrait every year, but I haven't really painted anyone else but myself <laughs> I tend to just I did like I I've been just kind of doing like self portraits every year as like an art therapy technique ever since I was like younger but maybe it'd be nice to paint someone else and like try out more portraits I still haven't done my portrait for this year I did um where's my portrait my portrait from last year you guys can uh, here there's my portrait from last year does it look like me <laughs> I added a little flower in there my grandma she passed away um, the year before last year and uh, so I wanted to add that in there for her and then I'm also just a really big fan of green so I added that into my little self portrait but that's a skill I'm definitely working on. I've taken a few classes with like other artists, like just like local classes or like free online classes I can find with other artists that like do portraits because I really would like to learn how to do portraits. I feel like it's all in the color mixing though, which I feel like I'm getting better at color mixing as time goes on. Something that just takes a lot of time to like pick up and learn is the color mixing. They were advised by Archie Art Channel. Oh. Okay, I will I will go check out that channel. I've never heard of that art channel before. I always like following different artists and stuff. Oh and thank you. Yeah, I uh, I'm proud of that portrait. I think it's one of my best yet. Uh, hoping this year it goes even better. I mean, whatever better means. I think it's just like neat, honestly, to like look back and uh, see how like my art style and like the things that I do have like changed over the years. They're all like good, but like in their own style and like their own way, right? I'm trying to like change my language around that because. You know, I feel like all art um, is good or beautiful, it's just a matter of uh, your perception of it, right? All art is 
kind of like meant to be there to express kind of those inner feelings and emotions and it's nice to uh, kind of take that all in when you're thinking of art and not just be so like well it has to look a, like a certain way right I really love the act of like you know mark making and stuff and I think that's why I try not to like go to like super hyper realistic with my stuff because I feel like there's something like really beautiful in kind of like those like little marks that an artist makes and it's very unique to every artist and just trying to reframe those things in my head one of the things that I've learned like by like reading art books and stuff over the years too it's especially like art therapy books I definitely am big on art therapy she's amazing but talks like 100 miles an hour yeah I, I've noticed that with some youtubers they're very fast and I am I think I'm probably like uh, I've joined some groups to like help me with like some of my social media and like YouTube channel and like learn about social media and like everyone else is like so fast and they're, they're making these like very like jump cutty videos and stuff and I definitely have like a slower pace and some of them pointed that out like even like the host of some of those challenges was like you know what it's kind of good that like your art channel is like very chill and like laid back and you have time lapses because there's other people out there that like that too <laughs> but at, at the start I was like are people gonna want to watch me if I'm like just very like relaxed and chill about like the way that I do things and I think uh yeah, I, I think, I think, I mean, I personally like watching channels that are more, like, chill and not, like, in your face, so I get that. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, I guess, like, my shorts content is definitely, like, faster paced, too, but I think there's still something slow about even some of my shorts like kind of just coming up with my own styles and hopefully I find a, an audience that likes the way that I do things it's kind of the hope right okay I'm just trying to define these areas now and by adding kind of more like marks on here it's my brush we're not gonna blend these out now because I want it to be extra detailed that's what I want for my channel yeah talking too fast puts anxious feelings into a channel I want art to be calming yeah I think for an art channel it honestly makes sense to like kind of have a chill vibe I mean you definitely can have like very fast-paced art but I mean feels almost like a little weird when you're like you know painting a flower <laughs> to be like what's up you guys <laughs> I don't even think I could like get to that like vibe when I'm doing art like every time I'm doing art I'm just like so chill like to you know like sip on tea or have like a little water and like just relax like a meditative state like you said need more meditation in my life not me more chaos I already have a kid <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man you know the like some of the channels that I do watch that are like kind of crazy they're like they tend to be like finance channels I don't know why, but like a lot of finance channels decide to like talk in like crazy, 
cra craziness. It's like they're trying to make finance, I guess, exciting for people to listen to. <laughs> I'll check some of your videos after this. Okay, yeah, I've got some like, I'm trying to add, I think this year, a little bit more tutorials. The last couple of weeks, I actually haven't been making some longer form videos other than these tutorials, but I like producing like the time lapse videos, which is what I'm trying to like, I'm gonna film this and put this into a time lapse. And then I have also been trying to do kind of more like informative, like question answer type videos. So like the little tutorial ones, but I think the time lapses are nice because it's just like chill. I just add some like nice music in the background. I don't like it when they talk so fast. I have to slow down the speed so I can understand exactly right. Uh, so fast. I I don't know how some people listen to like such fast stuff. I mean, like if you're trying to like really learn a topic, it's nice to kind of like slow it down and like really take in all the information. But if something's like super boring, I guess it makes sense that they try to speed it up so people kind of like don't lose interest. time-lapse with voiceover or no, no voice on them. Um, I actually thought about maybe doing some voiceover ones, but most of the time-lapses are just like literally just me painting. That's why I was kind of like, okay, like it'd be nice to like film my painting process like this and do like more tutorial talking style and like just talk about what I'm doing. And then for the time-lapse ones, just like just make it relaxing with like a bit of music a lot of the time I make them like pretty slow, like I'll put like um, like jazzy type music or kind of like lo-fi kind of chill music on it. I uh, used to swing dance a lot, so I tend to gravitate towards like the swingy type music. <laughs> but like very like chill like blues and swing type music, not like super fast swing music. <laughs> So hard to understand them. <laughs> but that's okay. At least there's a bit of bit of different content creators for that reason. I feel like the mainstream really likes the sped up thing. And that's like why it's so popular, because it is definitely like a mainstream thing. Okay, let me see. It looks like orange there, but it's it's looking pretty good here. Actually, you know what I can do? I can probably change the Kelvin as I'm streaming too. Maybe I changed it too much. Oh, that's too orangey. I'm gonna have to figure that out later. Yeah. We'll have to figure out the camera colors later, but honestly, it looks kind of pretty that it's orange in there. <laughs> Does not look orange right now, though. It would be nice to actually add some orange to it. But yeah, I'm going to add, I think, a few more highlights. And then, like, I think we're honestly, like, pretty done, right? Add extra highlights. I think I want to add maybe a bit more darkness in the middle. Maybe I should like mix up a color for that. I'm gonna mix up a combination. So I'm gonna make uh, a black color, black with a uh, ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson, and that'll give us like a nice purpley color. And I'm going to add a bit more purple. So I'm just going to put it here over top of that color there. And I'm going to dab that in. A little bit of purple. Because I feel like it just needs some of those darker sections. Uh, 
That'll kind of define those areas, I think, a little bit more, too. Okay, background with this. This looks nice. Okay. It's adding a bit of those darker tones in there just by adding that like purplish color. looking a little darker now. I'm gonna maybe add a few darker sections with that purple to the flower. Take the yellow off of this little liner brush here and then we'll go from there. Add a bit more of that darker purpley color and mix it a bit with this other purple that I made. Okay. I'm gonna right in the middle of the dark areas we're just gonna add we're just gonna add purpley color. in the darkest sections. Like flowers are definitely easier, I'm realizing, to do on my bigger ones. Like normally when I paint flowers, I actually do it on the bigger ones now that I realize it to get a lot of detail in flowers on such a small surface on these smaller ones. And I have to try painting a sunflower on like a bigger one so I have a bit more room for detail. Nice trial run though. I feel like we managed to get a decent amount of detail into this even on this like little three inch by three inch piece of paper. I'm pretty impressed that we were able to get a decent amount of detail in. Okay, let's look at that. I think we're, we're looking pretty good with that. Okay, I like that. I think I might even try the sunflowers like more orange next time, kind of like it looks like in the in the screen there. That looks really cool with the orange. I like that. I mean, I think we did pretty good today. That's looking pretty good. Thanks for like hanging out with me today, guys. It was nice to uh, paint and hang out. I can't wait to see, like, if any of you guys try it, make sure you tag me on social media so that I can see it. Here, I will go to the final scene before we end the stream. So uh, here is how to join. You can tag me on all social media platforms. I think pretty much all of them, at least. The ones I'm on most of the time is Instagram and Facebook, YouTube and TikTok. 
I use Instagram the most, but uh, cross post to Facebook sometimes too. But yeah, you can tag me on Instagram or Facebook. Those are, I think, the easiest places to tag me. And then, yeah, just use the hashtag mini paint challenge as well, because then all of our little mini paint challenge ones will be grouped into one section. So if you try any of them, just like use the hashtag and then tag me and then I'll be able to see your stuff. I can like share it to my stories and stuff and it's nice to be able to like see everyone's like different versions of the paintings and I wanted to say another thank you again to where is it where is there it is so Rachel uh, thanks again to Rachel for providing the reference photo today because we wouldn't have been able to paint the sunflower without her so I uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out, Ken. It was uh, nice that you were able to be here and make sure you guys turn on like the notification bell too so then you get notified when I go live again. I do this every Wednesday, so I'll be here next week again. I haven't decided what we're gonna paint next week, but I will post it in my stories on Instagram and Facebook when I figure out what we're gonna paint. But thanks again to Rachel. Make sure you go and follow her as well on all of her platforms and I will see you guys next week. So take care everyone. Bye.